There are certain cars in my top 50 countdown which I think probably nobody will be surprised by, and this is one of those. Most of you guys who know me and who have followed the channel for some time would probably have assumed that this would be in there somewhere. You might even have expected it to be even higher, the Chaparral 2J. Now, I've discussed this car briefly, or referenced it more specifically, in the episode about the Brabham, the BT46B, which of course also had a fan system, the only two race cars that I'm aware of to use such a system. Ariel also made an Atom concept with a fan system, potentially for the road, but haven't produced it. So you could say that's a third occasion, but that's about it. And of course we have the fictional Red Bulls in the Gran Turismo franchise, but of course they're not actual race cars. There are empty shells, I've seen one of them in person, but they don't actually run. This one though, well this one's more important, because the Brabham did it the most successfully, but the Chaparral did it first. And there's something important to be said about that, because it's easy to refine a concept which somebody else has already done. And that applies to a lot of things in life. Now, no matter how good the Brabham ever could have been, and however good it was, which was excellent, it owes that to the Chaparral. Now, maybe the Brabham would have had a fan system anyway, because after all, Gordon Murray was involved. But I doubt it. I don't think the Brabham would have necessarily had a fan system if this car hadn't pioneered the way. Now, of course, it could have happened at any point in history if the Chaparral hadn't have done it, any point after it, that is. But I just don't think the Brabham would have used it if the Chaparral hadn't shown the raw potential. Because everybody talks about Gordon Murray being this great genius, and he was a genius, and the cars that he made are cool. The McLaren, the light car company Rocket, the Brabham, various others. But so is Jim Hall, and I have far more respect for Jim Hall than I do for Gordon Murray, because as great as he is, Jim Hall did everything first in comparison. Jim Hall developed the first rear wing, the first active aero, the first fan car. Now, it's cool to do things better later on, but he did them first. So anything after that is just a refinement of a brilliant idea that somebody else already had. And to me, that counts for a lot. Chaparral is a company that makes intriguing cars. Every car that they make feels like it has a singular goal, a focused purpose, and has no fat that needs to be trimmed. It's pure and totally dedicated to its goal. Now, did they always win? No, but they had a lot of success. Even their Indy car, the 2K02, was a very successful machine. The 2J was very fast, even though it never won a race. And the reason why it didn't win a race wasn't because it was a bad concept, it was because it just wasn't reliable. So the concept was sound, it was the execution which could have been done better. And again, I talked about that in the episode about the Brabham. Now, no question, the Brabham has a better fan system. Of course, it's simpler, lighter, doesn't have a secondary engine to rely on, and consequently, it won its only race. But at the same time, it did that eight years later. It took eight years for anyone else to attempt that same concept. Why did it take eight years? It's a logical step to move on and try again with a better system, and yet no one did. That's interesting to me. Now, maybe people thought in a similar way to turbines or various other things that it wasn't worth their time, but if there's one thing that both the 2J and the Brabham showed, it was that fan systems are an incredible innovation, and they had so much potential that was ridiculously held back. I would say that the fan system, the ground effect fan, is quite possibly the greatest racing innovation of all time. It wasn't the most significant, that was the rear wing. But it was the greatest, as far as I'm concerned, because no other racing innovation of any kind, be it carbon fiber, be it rear wings, be it whatever, could have had the impact that the fan system could have had because it was a twofold one. The fan system would have simultaneously made cars decades faster in terms of development time, but also decades safer in terms of how much more quickly the sport could have advanced. Because it doesn't just make the cars quicker, it makes them more controlled, it gives them more grip regardless of speed, and it makes them better for safety. Now the only disadvantage of the system 
if you do it right, of course, because one is reliability of the second engine, but if you discount that, like Brabham did, then the only real issue is that it kicks up stones. But as I've said before a number of times, I don't put much credence into that line of argument. You're racing drivers, you've got helmets on, you've got windshields, get over it. There aren't that many stones on a racetrack anyway compared to the road, so just be grateful that you're not there. And even if it was kicking up stones, which, yeah, I'm sure it did, there are ways around that. You could quite easily put a mesh over the rear of the fan, something which doesn't restrict the airflow too much, but that can stop large debris. Because if you're still complaining if it's just small pebbles or dust even, which the, br <laughs> the drivers probably still would complain if it was just dust, then just get over it. The real issue was never the stones or the dust, it was that they didn't like being beaten. Even though the car didn't actually win, it was a constant threat. And the fact that it was so fast, using what they would call a cheat, probably at the time, if that was even a term, they just didn't like being beaten. Of course not. But instead, they banned it. If they hadn't have banned it, imagine an entire grid using it. Imagine what F1 could look like now if it hadn't have been banned. Imagine GT3 cars using fan systems, with exit fans through the rear window of the car pointing upward instead of out the back of the car. Imagine fan systems pointing out of the side passenger windows on DTM cars. It could have been used in literally every form of motorsport. Except for perhaps rally, for obvious reasons. But it's an incredible innovation, and I love the fact that the Chaparral did something which the Brabham didn't do. With the Chaparral, Jim Hall made the very controversial decision, and it's controversial to this day in terms of Gran Turismo players especially, which is where most of the conversation about the car tends to happen, in that he completely put any concept of looks and image to one side, in the pure and total pursuit of a performance goal. The Chaparral 2J is, objectively speaking, one of the ugliest cars ever made. It's a box with wheels. I happen to love the look of the car, but I can completely understand why a lot of people don't. And the reason why I love it is because it doesn't care what people think of it. It just achieves its goal. Now, the Brabham didn't do that. The Brabham is an F1 car which happens to have a fan attached to it. Apart from that, it looks fairly conventional. The Chaparral sacrificed everything in total pursuit of that concept. Every single component on the car revolves around that concept and around that common goal. I have never seen another race car so purely and totally focused on achieving one thing as the 2J to the cost of everything else, to the cost of visual appeal, to the cost of reliability, and ultimately, ironically, to the cost of getting any victories. But, in a weird kind of way, that's almost more poetic. An artist who creates something so incredible to achieve such a specific goal that it was almost too messy for its own good and didn't achieve what the whole point of the concept was. But at the same time, I love the 2J for that, it's an incredible machine, and one which, even by today's standards, could still give plenty of modern race cars, not necessarily formula cars of course, but plenty of others, a great run for their money. And let's not forget the fact that that car had roughly 670 horsepower in the real world, when many of the cars on the grid had a whole lot more. That as well speaks to how good the Chaparral was in terms of sheer performance, given that it was multiple seconds per lap quicker than everything else, way back in 1970. While, mind you, at the same time, Toyota's car, the 7, was busy killing multiple test drivers. The Chaparral didn't do that, it just happened to not work too well. So overall, I love the 2J, it's a superb machine, one which stands the test of time, and one which I would say is quite possibly the most impressive racing car ever built. And I know that there are plenty of people who would disagree with that, especially F1 fans. But for me, this is the one. And I'm not even a, fa a fan of Can-Am. That's the weirdest thing. It's just this car for me. But that's it overall. Probably the longest episode of this entire series so far. But if there's ever a car to deserve it, it's this one. So if you want to check out all of my other Countdown episodes, you can click through at the end. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.